Hi, hello, welcome to Devon Monk's Works and Worlds. I really appreciate you coming by and seeing me today. We are on Monday Monk 99, which means the next Monday Monk will be um, the 100th, the 100th Monday Monk that we have been Monday Monking together, <laughs> which is really exciting. And um, I think I want, I've been trying to think of a cool, fun thing to do for the 100th uh, Monday Monk as a celebration. and. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it live, but I don't expect anybody to show up. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and do what I do sitting here usually live. And if anybody shows up and wants to chime in or say anything, I will absolutely answer questions. And if nobody shows up, then it's just going to be like every other Monday monk, um, except here's the twist. I'm going to have to do it on a Saturday. I know. My schedule coming up in the next several weekends and Mondays are is booked tight. So the only time that I could find in my schedule that works for actually um, getting on the computer and having a conversation maybe with people who show up is uh, Saturday the 17th. And I will need to do it relatively early in the day. So I'm thinking, and that that's the right date, right? Like Saturday's the is a 17th. I don't... I don't have a calendar in front of me, but I'm assuming that's the right day. Uh, th this coming Saturday, not next week, but the week after the uh, 17th, um, and we'll do a live show. So, so I guess this is going to be an additional show. I will do Monday Monk that uh, regular week. So next week there will be a Monday Monk, but then I will do an additional show on Saturday. Uh, let's do it around 12 o'clock. Sounds good. 12 o'clock Pacific time. So if you're East Coast, that'll be like three o'clock in the in the day. And maybe we'll go for, I don't know, a half hour, hour, depending on if anybody shows up. I will just get on and chat away. And if somebody wants to ask me any questions about books or about uh, writing, how to, how to write or how, what the industry looks like right now, I'm certainly happy to chat. Or if anybody wants to talk knitting or gardening or living in Oregon or going on RV trips or vacations or paranormal stuff or uh, anything, anything, I am more than happy to talk. Of course, if you ask me about paranormal inv investigation stuff, I will point you toward my brothers who do that. I'm not the one who does that, but um, yeah. So let's get together, let's talk, we'll have a good time. And, and if nobody shows up, that's okay. I will write out some questions for myself <laughs> that I can ask that readers and uh, people have asked me before and maybe that I haven't gotten a chance to answer. So I will at least try to make it entertaining. We'll see how it goes. So tune in, not next Saturday, which is like the 10th, but the 17th around noon and let's have a little chat. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to do live and we're going to see if my little potato of a laptop can actually handle a live stream. We'll find out. <laughs> if not, I might have to do it for my actual desk, which means I'll have to clean my office. So come on, potato. You, you got to work for me here. <laughs> okay. So uh, hello again. Thank you so much for stopping by. Now that that's out of the way, uh, what I'm going to talk about what I usually talk about, which is how is writing going, how is knitting going, and how are things in general in Monkland. Writing is going well, thank you. I am continuing to um, write Wayward Devils. It's coming along um, because I have l more limited writing time than usual. It is coming along a little bit more slowly, but it's coming along at a good pace for the time that I am putting in on it. So I still have hopes that that's going to come out this spring. I'm very excited about that. Um, I know there's going to be a special price coming up on the Wayward books and on some of the uh, ordinary books. I will let you know when that happens. I'm not in control of this particular uh, deal that's coming by real soon. But as soon as I know it, I will let you know here on the channel and also in my newsletter and also on my blog and also on Facebook. So if you follow me in any of those places, uh, you will hear about it. If you don't follow me in any of those places, you can sign up for my newsletter. I always put a link down below, or you can just go over to my blog, which is uh, www.devonmonk.com. I will also put a link to that down below. And I, I do an infrequent update there on my blog. I also update really quite well so far on my Patreon. Once a week, I do a little uh, update on how things are going and uh, it isn't the same as the Monday Monk. It's different stuff. 
Uh, sometimes it's it's repeated stuff, but then there's additional stuff. So you can also follow me on my Patreon if you want to, and there's a link down below for that too. So writing is going well. Um, there's going to be a sale coming up. I'll let you know when that happens. And yeah, that's it. That's about it for writing. I am in outline mode for the side projects that I'm going to be working on. And I will talk a little more about that uh, in this next segment, which is how's knitting going? Knitting's going well. Thank you. I did get a knit toy done for the newsletter that went out uh, last week, I think. Uh, it was a it was a January's newsletter, but I think I actually sent it February 1st. So close, so close. <laughs> I missed it by this much. Anyway, okay. So here's, I brought the toy up here so you could see what I knit to give away in the newsletter. It is Toad. Toad is um is like little green buddy. <laughs> He's uh just you know I mean what more do you need from a toad? He's just kind of your mild mannered amphibian until he hears a call for help and then hold on a second and then Toad becomes Super Toadstool, the hero fighting justice doing frog toad toadmodium. Here he is. He is. <laughs> He's in his little mushroom cap is his little cape. His <laughs> No, I don't know why I wanted to knit this. Okay, so the toad pattern is one you can find online, but then I knit him his his toad toad stool cap. So, this is toad stool, the super toad stool, the crime fighter, and he was given away on my newsletter and I think I think somebody already uh contacted me for him. So, he will be going out soon to the winner. Let me just put him back here. So yeah, Toadstool is back there keeping an eye on us. And this is where I come to the next little bit of news that involves the side projects that I'm working on. Because my writing time is a little more limited and because I want to work on these two, they're kind of a conjoined side project that is writing related. Um, and I'm trying to figure out how to fit everything into my schedule. And basically what I keep doing is just adding more things to my schedule and taking nothing out of my schedule. That's not working so good. Like it turns out that yeah, I just run out of time for sleep and stuff. So I am um, having to let go of a couple things that I, I enjoy doing, but it's okay to let go of them for a little while. It's a hiatus. So I am taking a hiatus for, from knitting toys for the newsletter. I might still knit some toys and they might still show up as giveaways on the newsletter, but I was being very consistent and knitting one a month and I've done that for three years in a row and I've enjoyed it. I've had so much fun with all the toys and you know giving them away but I'm going to take a little step back from that because that is a several hour um, investment of time. I, I like knitting so you know I don't mind investing the time but it was starting to get where I was having to choose between if I had time to write something or if I had time to knit something to get it done for the newsletter and right now with those side projects I want to do, I need to have time to write stuff. So knitting, knit toys will be um, more infrequent. If you only follow me for that, I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't have to come back. I understand the knit toys are cute. Um, you might want to check back occasionally to see if a knit toy shows up again because they will show up, but I'm just not going to do it monthly anymore. So the last toys that are being given away are uh, Super Toadstool, the Jolly Pickle and the Fish in a Sweater. And I think there's only one person who hasn't contacted me from for the newsletter. I want to say it's the Fish in the Sweater person. So that toy might still be given away in, in next month's newsletter if nobody claims it. But then I'm pivoting and going on hiatus from that and putting uh, more time into writing because these this side project project is something I've been wanting to do for decades. So I'm really hoping to explore it and see if it's going to live up to my hopes for it. And you know, it might be a complete mess and I decide, no, let's go back to knitting. <laughs> In which case I'll go back to knitting. Like, I mean, I'm flexible. So we'll see how it goes, but that's the news on that front. And uh, yeah, so that's knitting. It's going pretty well, except that it's on hiatus. So I might, there's a couple things I owe as gifts to family members, I'll get those done. But uh, it's not like a monthly deadline. So that's, that's on hiatus for now. Okay, so we talked about the live uh, Monday Monk, which will actually be like a Saturday chat. We're gonna do a Saturday chat uh, live for celebrating the 100th Monday Monk, which will be next week will be the 100th Monday Monk. I will remind you then also that there is a Saturday chat that following Saturday. So, um, you know, stick with me. We'll, we'll see if we can make this work. 
And then we talked about writing, we talked about knitting. So now we're going to talk about what's going on in Monkland. Um, so we had a good weather weekend. It's February, it's the beginning of February, and we had sunshine and like high 40s, maybe low 50 degree days. So, you know, cool, but, but nice, no rain. It, we had fog Sunday morning, but Saturday was just pretty much sunny skies with some clouds here and there. And so I was talking to my husband the night before about what are the projects we want to get done around the house, outside of the house or inside of the house this year. And so Saturday morning we woke up and we're, we're kind of still hashing out like, when do we want to do the simplifying of the beds out front? And when do we want to do all these different things? And he suddenly remembered that he had had, had delivered, and, um, I'll say it's bark dust, but it's not really, it's ground up trees to, uh, our his our brother-in-law's house which was really sweet of them to let that pile of ground up trees get dumped in their driveway but it's been there for a couple of months and we were supposed to remove it it was just a temporary loading spot and then we were supposed to bring it up to our house because we have raised beds and we keep bark dust around the raised beds to keep for our garden for our actual vegetable garden so that we have less weeds and grass get into our garden beds which has always been a challenge we're always pulling grass out of our garden beds and we have found by putting down plastic so that the uh, grass can't grow there and putting bark on top of it we don't have to deal with pulling weeds hardly at all in our garden beds and that's nice so it was the we, I think it was in 2020 or 2021 that we actually put the bark down. So it was time to put new bark down because weeds were growing in it. Yes, even though there's plastic underneath it, because the bark had been out for a couple of years, you know, things grow in Oregon and there's enough rain and enough sun that, that it was all weedy. So, so we realized that we needed to move the pile of ground up trees. And why am I calling it a pile of ground up trees? Because my husband got it free from one of the tree removal services around here when the, the tree removal service has a few yards or several yards or 10 yards or 12 yards or whatever it is of uh, tree matter that they've ground up. They will give it away for free. They'll just bring it to wherever you want, dump it, and now you've got free. It's kind of like bark dust, but it's not bark dust. It's more like uh, ground up trees. <laughs> it has leaves in it and sticks in it and that kind of thing. That's why I'm saying it's not like not like the the bark dust or the uh, bark chips that you would actually put on like ornamental beds. But we didn't need anything ornamental. And so uh, he, so anyways, we realized we had to pick that up and we needed to put it out around the garden and hey, it was sunshiny and why not do it Saturday? So that's what we did. But first we had to weed it because remember all those weeds had grown in it. And if we just put that ground up, it's kind of mulch on top of it, we would just be making all the weeds very happy and they would grow even bigger. So first we weeded that entire space and it took us two and a half hours to pull all of the weeds out of there. And probably because you're taking some of the bark the ground up bark and mulch with it. We probably did over 300 pounds of weeds because we filled up our um, green waste barrel and it was really heavy. And uh, we still have another pile that we're going to have to uh, put in our green waste barrel next week. So that was a big project. And then after that, um, I decided to do the vinegar and soap weed treatment. This is something that's been around on the internet and my brother Daryl does this. Thank you, Daryl. And I, to, for telling me about it, um, so I mixed up, we had two gallons of 30% vinegar, which household vinegar that you use in your kitchen is between three and 5%. So this is strong stuff. So I had on a mask and gloves on my hands because I didn't want to get, you know, vinegar burns, uh, because my hands are being really delicate right now. And I probably would have, it would have really irritated them and put in some Dawn dish soap so it would stick to the weeds and then sprayed the entire space around our garden beds and went through two full gallons of vinegar. But then I thought, well, that was so cool. I got that all done. I was really excited about it, but my back was killing me. So I thought I need a new sprayer tank thing that doesn't make me bend over as much to try to get the, um, uh, the weeds and also that it uh, has better seals. So, and it was time to buy a new one. So I thought I'll go get a cheap one of those and I'll go pick up some more vinegar. And I found it at one of our local stores at Lowe's. And um, I was gonna buy four gallons because I needed to pour this weed uh, vinegar stuff down the entire gravel driveway at the bottom of our property. We have a long gravel driveway that we put in at the bottom of our property 
and we haven't weeded it. And again, it's Oregon, everything grows in Oregon. So there's little weeds all popping up. So I'm like, it's a beautiful day, let me go do that. So I went and I got six gallons instead of four thinking let's keep two on hand. And then I put it in the new little uh, pump thing and walked out there and put on my headphones and listened to music and um, sprayed the entire gravel driveway. Six gallons. It took six gallons of vinegar to cover that driveway in a thin spray. Two other gallons around the garden. We went through eight gallons of vinegar, of that high potency vinegar. Our yard smelled like a pickle. <laughs> it smelled like a soapy pickle. And I think our neighbors were not pleased. <laughs> like nobody gave me mean looks or anything, but oh, you could smell that. Oh, you could smell that. And I had a mask on while I was doing it. So I'm like, oh, it kind of smells vinegary, pretty strong. And if the wind would shift and really go at me, it's like, oh yeah, that's very vinegary. But when I took the mask off, because I was wearing an N uh, NK95, you know, those good ones with the bar over your nose so that it closes really good. Wow, that was, it was, it was vinegar to hurt. It was, it was some strong dill pickle vibe going on in the neighborhood. So uh, I did that. And while I did that, my husband uh, shoveled that mulch stuff, that ground up trees around the garden beds. And um, it was six yards. Yeah, six yards of, of mulch. And uh, then we know from our neighbors that cedar chips are good for uh, keeping away some of the bugs and some of the uh, fungus and molds away from garden areas. And we thought, well, we like bugs, but we want to have healthy bugs in there, you know, bugs that the garden needs. And we would like to get rid of any fungal or mold stuff. So because it's Oregon and it's wet and everything grows here, even fungus and molds. And so my husband on Sunday went out and got uh, two loads of of cedar bark chips, which aren't the soft little fluffy cedar things that you put like in your bunny cage. They're like, they're chunks of chunks of cedar, you know, they're chunks of wood chunks basically. And so he unloaded that Sunday. I was doing other things, so I wasn't able to help him. And um, by the end of the day, I said, okay, how many pounds do you think you shoveled around our garden bed, our raised garden beds? He got out his phone so he could do the calculations. And uh, the mulchy stuff that we put in first, the ground up tree stuff was wet, which meant it was heavy. And thank you, brother-in-law Lance, for helping shovel it into the trailer. We really appreciate that. But my husband ended up shoveling it all out of the trailer. And uh, he was really smart. He shoveled it into piles and then spread that with a rake. So it wasn't just one pile that he shoveled it all into and then had to remove it again from the shovel. Cause that would be shovel it onto the trailer, shovel it off of the trailer, then shovel it from that pile to every place around the garden. And said he shoveled it off of, onto the trailer, off of the trailer into piles around the garden that got spread out. So um, that was heavy because it was wet. And uh, so he did a calculation for basically dirt. It was about as heavy as, as a shovel full of dirt. And uh, so he did the calculations of how much that weighed. And then the cedar chips were not as heavy and you can do a calculation for how much cedar chip weighs. And he knew he got seven yards of cedar chips. So six, six yards of the mulch and seven yards of the cedar chips all got laid down. And so he did the calculations. Are you ready? I mean, those people out there who know this probably won't be impressed by this, but this it's impressive as heck to me. It's 12,000 pounds, 12,000 pounds of, of wood chips, chip type things went around our garden. And my husband did that a shovel at a time over two days. And oh my gosh, what a beast. Good, good job. I'm like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, I feel okay. A little sore from twisting, you know, because you, you pick up the shovel and you twist, but otherwise I'm feeling okay. I mean, it's not like we haven't done this before, but every time we pick up a project that's really big like this, it, the weight of the amount of yard work that we do is just boggles my mind. So uh, in case you want to know, he never uses one of those regular triangular spade things like any normal person would use. He uses this like metal snow shovel so that he can do these huge stinking scoops of stuff and get it spread out faster. It's too heavy for me to do it that way. I use I use regular shovel, but he just does it in these big, <laughs> I think he could have, you know, been one of those people who fed the coal steamers, you know, who shoveled coal and shoved it into the train thing. I think he would have done that really good if he ever wanted a job back in the day. <laughs> 
Anyway, so it looks amazing. We're hoping that it will be good for a couple of years, if not three years or four years. Um, we're hoping that if we keep up on the vinegar um, weed stuff, that we can just put a lighter layer of cedar over the top of it so that we don't have to do 12,000 pounds of moving, you know, actual just greenery stuff or soil stuff or whatever you want to call it we would we would like to do less of that that's why we're trying to simplify the yard and so we're hoping that we can that this will hold for a few years and have simple maintenance and less um vigorous replacements so yeah that's that's the real big thing that we did this weekend uh he did the most uh the, I helped out Saturday, but Sunday I was up to my ears and other things and I wasn't able to do that. But he just chunked along at it and got it done. And I, I, uh, thank you. Thank you, honey. You did a great job. <laughs> anyway, okay. So uh, that's probably it for uh, Monkland. I do have a couple of uh, small, just local uh, trips coming up. I will report on those as I uh, do those. And maybe I will show you some pictures because there's some pretty cool places. But otherwise, in the meantime, remember we're gonna to try to get together for a Saturday chat, not this next Saturday, but the Saturday after the Monday Monk 100th, uh, 100th video. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye for now.